Hey fellow photographer, I hope you're gonna love this video because it's about models, about jewelry and of course about photos. In particular, it is about lifestyle photos for jewelry advertisements. Now this is kind of work that you do for clients like jewelry brands or for independent designers or probably just for a designer that you found on Etsy and you want to bond with them because they do awesome pieces which you want to uh, incorporate into your photos. Well, even if you just shoot glamour photos with model models, you will definitely benefit from the uh, tips that I'm about to share in this video. So my plan is to first go uh, about some thoughts that you should have before your shoot and then go over the basics that you should follow during the shoot in order to get killer photos. So what do you have to think about before the shoot? Well, most important, you need to get very, very clear about your target lifestyle feeling, about the feeling that you want to transport with your photos. Is it uh, posh, proud and self-confident or do you want to transport something young, playful and sexy? You need to get very clear about that either together with your client in a briefing or in your own project just for yourself and then once you know it exactly then you do everything in your power to transport this feeling. You don't need much for that. I mean what we used in this tutorial was a corner in a room. Um, and you can, of course, use another location which matches your theme. Um, you need, of course, a model, jewelry, some matching clothes. And what uh, what we used as a light source was um, yeah, soft boxes, a soft light source. You could also use an umbrella or you can use something else. However, the two of us, we were two photographers here. Um, we agreed on soft light, uh, especially for this tutorial, since it's uh, very easy to recreate and very safe to shoot. So let's talk about your friends and your enemies during such a shoot. What are your friends for lifestyle shooting? Well, the friends are styling and makeup. Your friends are uh, fashion, the expression of, a, of the model, um, a matching location, a matching light. Yeah, it all helps you to create the lifestyle feeling. What are your enemies? Well, exactly the same. Exactly the same, because all of that, styling, makeup, fashion, expression, the location, um, even your light, it can all distract from the jewelry, which is actually the star of your shoot. Uh, so the key is to use all the cool elements, but to use them gently, to use them uh, in a subtle way, which adds to the feeling, but it doesn't distract from the jewelry. Uh, so let's talk about all these uh, items in detail starting with styling makeup and let's say the fashion it all of course should match it all should add to your target feeling but it should be plain and simplistic it should provide you with let's say a plain canvas for your star for the jewelry uh, so uh, it should underline that this jewelry pieces transform your model into let's say a desired person yeah maybe even a femme fatale if you go for dramatic photos but it just should underline it it should not take over it should not that that the uh, viewer is is focused on the fashion because that is uh, so how to say that so eye catching <laughs> uh, um, so stay away from from complicated things go for plain and simple similar stuff uh, goes for the expressions that your models uh, make it should match but it should not distract. So it's it's awesome if your model can act out feelings. But in this case, let her act out something like a pleasant surprise rather than, let's say, intense fear or drama. Stay away from the intense feelings <laughs> because that would take over. That would take over your um, photos. Then where should she look? She should, for this kind of photos, she should never, never look into your lens. Uh, once she looks into your lens, um, she makes eye contact with the viewer and then it's a portrait of the model. Then it's not a photo of jewelry anymore. Uh, so let her look somewhere else, make a story out of that, let her, let her look down on her body or somewhere, but not into your lens. And the same goes for posing. As yeah, a poses should underline the target lifestyle feeling. So her, it, it should be a body language which matches uh, let's say if it's about 
pride, then the body should be pretty upright and the head should be pretty high and so on. But it shouldn't be so weird that it's taking over your photo. Let's talk about the uh, location because that is where, in my opinion, lifestyle photos quite often go overboard. Uh, because on the one hand, the location shouldn't match, but it also shouldn't distract. And, and I think if your location is pretty distracting, if it's pretty dizzy, then please blur it away with an open aperture as much as you need to blur it away. But don't let it take over. As the two photographers, uh, yeah, in, in our example, we just went for a corner in a room with some white wallpaper. And that's enough, enough for our feeling. But of course, you can get more complicated. But then again, care that people are not focused on the bright window in the background, but they're still focused on your model and the jewelry. Yeah. Uh, brightness, lighting. Let's talk about lighting. This really, really depends on your artistic vision. I mean, for this kind of photos, it could be anything from super hard to super soft. Yeah. Um, obviously, for this tutorial, we went for um, relatively soft because, like I said, it's, it's safe to shoot. It's uh, very easy to control and it's easy for you to recreate. So what we used was simply two soft boxes, um, uh, 60 by 90 soft boxes with grids. In each soft box, there was a speed light, guide number 58 on one quarter of its power. One soft box was directly on the model from an angle of roughly 45 degrees. The other one was usually shooting into the background to just brighten up the background a bit. Uh, the camera, uh, I did take pretty much all the photos with an 85 millimeter prime lens on f8 and uh, ISO 320. All right, uh, if you recreate it like this, uh, let me give you some tips for the shoot. Um, if her eyes are visible in your frame, then definitely still focus on her eyes and not the jewelry, because otherwise it would just look wrong. Yeah, sharp jewelry and, and, and blurred eyes. Yes, it would transport your jewelry, but it would just look wrong, <laughs> believe me. So still focus on her eyes. However, if you have very shallow depth of field, yeah, um, I mean, it's looking more cinematic. It probably underlines your target lifestyle feeling, but care that the jewelry on the model is not so much blurred that it's not recognizable anymore. Now, it can be blurred a bit, but it should still be recognizable. Uh, don't blur away the star of your show. <laughs> uh, then um, talking about that jewelry, the jewelry and also the clothing, it must all be placed very, very accurately for every photo. It should, should always be neat and clean and accurately. Um, if you've got stuff like a twisted, a twisted necklace or twisted straps of her bra or something like that, repairing that afterwards in Photoshop is a headache. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and care that everything is sitting neatly um, for every exposure that you take. Yeah? And when you shoot, um, directly shoot horizontals, shoot verticals, and shoot photos that you intend to crop square. Yeah, even if your briefing or your plan only requires one of these formats, experience tells me that might change later, yeah, especially when you're working with a pretty creative agency and they see your fantastic photos and um, they only wanted to use it for a poster or for a catalog or so. But now they say, wow, these photos are so great. We also want to use them for that and for that and for that. And then all of a sudden what you see is uh, you only made horizontal photos and they crop and cut and squeeze your horizontal photo in order to somehow fit it into a vertical layout. And that is really heartbreaking. So be wise, uh, directly shoot various formats, various crops, and um, then you're safe, you're future proof, so to say. Yeah. Another tip, um, avoid cutting into the jewelry, yeah, uh, you can really cut into her head or into her face. That is fine for this kind of photos, but don't cut into the jewelry. Um, okay, that's a lot of rules uh, and, and you know rules are there for breaking. So of course you can break them, especially if um, yeah, your agency is creative or it's your own project. It can work with broken rules. Yeah, she can look into the lens and it can be intense. Um, you may cut into the jewelry. Uh, it all might work. But if you want to be on the safe side, first follow the rules 
and then go crazy creatively and break them. In any case, uh, please give it a try. Shoot some lifestyle jewelry photos and get a feeling for it. I think it's a very nice experience. And you also want to use the photos later on because in a next video, I will show you how to shoot some really, really cool product photos of such jewelry and then combine both of that the product photos and the lifestyle photos into impressive advertisements. Uh, so you will get some very eye-catching results and I'm looking forward to you trying it out. For that, I wish you good light. <laughs>